Have you ever watched The Magnificent Ambersons? Perhaps it was your first classic film experience, or maybe you're well-versed in its lesser-known facts and anecdotes. Regardless of your history with the movie, there's something undeniably captivating about this 1942 film directed by Orson Welles. This cinematic gem unfolds a story of a bygone era, exploring the rise and fall of the Amberson family in the midst of societal and technological changes. But beyond the narrative, there are intriguing tidbits surrounding the film's production and the infamous studio interference that reshaped its destiny. The question arises, what lesser known facts or anecdotes about the magnificent Ambersons fascinate you? Now, as you ponder this question, we'd love to hear your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie. Feel free to share your stories and memories in the comments below. Your insights and recollections add depth to our appreciation of this classic film. Orson Welles later described the 88-minute version of the film as having been edited by a lawnmower. This statement reflects the significant alteration made to the magnificent Ambersons after its initial preview. The movie had its first showing in Pomona, California, on March 17, 1942, primarily to a teenage audience attending a different film. Unfortunately, this preview didn't go well. The audience laughed at dramatic moments, and the comment cards were largely negative. It was considered one of the worst previews in the industry. Wells' comment about the film being edited by a lawnmower highlights the extent of the changes forced upon the movie. The original vision and length of the film were drastically cut, and the result was a much shorter and different version. This event had a profound impact on the film's reception and legacy. The 1942 movie The Magnificent Ambersons, directed by Orson Welles, faced significant post-production changes. The original version of the film was substantially altered, with key scenes removed and reshot. Notably, the film's editor, Robert Wise, and post-production head, Jack Moss, added and revised scenes to enhance continuity and reduce the film's length. These changes included the removal of hints about the Oedipal relationship between George and his mother, the transformation of the town from the 19th century to modernity, and the family's financial struggles. The iconic ball sequence, initially captured in one long crane shot, was re-edited, removing a significant portion of dialogue. Composer Bernard Herrmann was so dissatisfied with these alterations that he had his name removed from the film's credits, protesting RKO's interference with his work. The film's rough cut was sent to Wells in Brazil, but it remains missing. Despite the changes and challenges faced during its production, The Magnificent Ambersons remains a notable piece of cinematic history, showcasing the complexities and controversies that can arise in the filmmaking process. The movie The Magnificent Ambersons from 1942 faced significant editing changes after Orson Welles, the director, was absent. RKO, the studio, removed 50 minutes of footage and destroyed it. Some believed it was to prevent Wells from making further changes. The re-editing was managed by Robert Wise and Jack Moss. Moss avoided Wells' suggestions, even ignoring phone calls and discarding telegrams. The film's quality was altered due to these changes. This iconic movie also saw a notable scene with Agnes Moorhead, which earned her an Academy Award nomination. However, this scene was created using original and reshot footage with no input from Wells. The movie's production had its share of challenges, and these edits were made to address them. Interestingly, the sets from The Magnificent Ambersons were reused in other films to save money, a common practice in the industry. Val Luton used them in Cat People and The Curse of the Cat People to cut production costs. In summary, The Magnificent Ambersons underwent significant changes in editing, Agnes Moorhead's scene, and set reuse in other films. These factors shaped the movie's final form and its impact on cinematic history. Orson Welles, the director of the 1942 movie The Magnificent Ambersons, had high hopes for the film. He believed it could surpass his acclaimed work, Citizen Kane. The film faced challenges during production, including sound issues caused by the extensive use of moving cameras and crane shots. Rather than delaying production, Wells chose to continue, leading to the need for extensive dialogue redubbing, which cost three times the budgeted amount, totaling $25,000. There was a consideration of sending editor Robert Wise to work alongside Wells, but wartime travel restrictions made this plan unfeasible. In the 1970s, Wells, who had refused to watch his own films, 
finally viewed the magnificent Ambersons on TV. Although he confessed that the ending didn't work, he admitted he still liked the film and was moved to tears. This film's history is marked by the ambitious vision of its director, technical challenges during production, and the bittersweet reflection of its creator, Orson Welles. It remains a noteworthy piece of cinematic history despite its tumultuous journey to the screen. The recutting of the 1942 movie The Magnificent Ambersons caused a deep rift in Orson Welles' friendships with Robert Wise and Joseph Cotton. Cotton later wrote several letters of apology to Wells, and the two later reconciled. Wells and Wise, however, remained on acrimonious terms for some 42 years until Wise was invited to come to the stage by Gilbert Cates when the Directors Guild of America honored Wells with its Lifetime Achievement Award in 1984. The former rivals ended up shaking hands as the crowd rewarded them with a standing ovation. The film The Magnificent Ambersons from 1942 faced financial troubles, with a budget of $1 million and a loss of over $600,000 which was a significant sum for RKO, a small studio. The movie's problems didn't end there. After a disappointing preview, it became evident to RKO executives that the film was too long, dense, and somber. Orson Welles, the director, had left for Brazil to work on another project, leaving editor Robert Wise with the responsibility of recutting and trimming the film. The movie's production was also notable for its elaborate and expensive set, the Ambersons Mansion, which was one of the most costly sets of its time, later used in other RKO films. These challenges and behind-the-scenes developments shed light on the tumultuous history of this classic film. In 1942, the movie The Magnificent Ambersons faced a significant alteration that had a lasting impact on its legacy. RKO, the studio behind the film, made the decision to cut 50 minutes from the original version and add a happy ending while its director, Orson Welles, was out of the country. Regrettably, the removed footage was subsequently destroyed, leaving only the cutting continuity transcript as a record of the lost scenes. This decision to alter the film without the director's input remains one of the most infamous instances of studio interference in Hollywood history. The film's original version, as envisioned by Orson Welles, is known for its innovative approach to set design. Welles insisted that the inside of the Ambersons' mansion be constructed as if it were a real house, complete with continuous rooms having four walls and ceilings. This unique approach allowed the camera to move freely throughout the house and shoot from any angle, contributing to the film's distinctive visual style. Interestingly, Orson Welles himself could never bring himself to watch the revised version of the film. It wasn't until the early 1980s when director Henry Jaglum, a protege of Wells, convinced him to watch an uninterrupted cable cast of the movie. Wells initially watched with fascination for the first hour or so, but eventually he clicked off the film, stating, From here on, it becomes their movie, highlighting his disappointment with the studio's alterations. In conclusion, The Magnificent Ambersons is a film that not only showcases Orson Welles' innovative filmmaking techniques, but also serves as a cautionary tale of studio interference in the creative process. The lost footage and the director's disapproval of the revised version have cemented the film's status as a Hollywood legend, reminding us of the delicate balance between artistic vision and studio control in the world of cinema. As we bid adieu to this captivating cinematic journey through 1,942 seconds timeless classic, The Magnificent Ambersons, I implore you to pause and reflect on the profound resonance this film has had in your own life. This masterful work of art, with its vivid portrayal of changing times and family dynamics, has the remarkable power to elicit a multitude of emotions, memories, and thoughts within each of us. Consider the characters, their triumphs and tribulations, and how they mirror our own experiences and relationships. How have you, like young George Amberson Minifer, navigated the complexities of life's choices? Or perhaps you've identified with the decline of the Amberson's world, witnessing the march of progress and the bittersweet nostalgia that accompanies such transitions. The beauty of cinema lies in its ability to connect us to our past, our dreams, and our desires. The Magnificent Ambersons isn't just a film, it's a reflection of our own lives, an invitation to ponder the intricate tapestry of human existence and the ceaseless passage of time. Now, I encourage you to share your cherished memories, insights, or thoughts on this cinematic masterpiece. 
How has the magnificent Ambersons touched your heart? What indelible mark has it left on your cinematic journey? Your unique perspective enriches the collective appreciation of this film, making it all the more magnificent. Thank you for your time and for sharing your personal connection to this cinematic gem. Your thoughts add depth to the legacy of the magnificent Ambersons, and together we continue to weave the tapestry of its enduring significance. Until we meet again in the world of cinema, stay inspired and keep those memories alive.